Hey, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel, Cruising Out of Sight. Wanted to kind of slip in a part 2B of this roulette series that I've been working on. Uh, we've already had two parts. If you haven't seen those already, definitely go back and look at those. The links are in the description below. Uh, part one, we talked about this Martingale strategy where we play on the dozens to get points from the casino that should offset how much we lose, should far offset how much we lose. Uh, part two, we talked about the math behind that. I wanted everybody to understand how did we get here? How did we figure out all these odds tables, the numbers behind it? Um, part three was going to be, okay, what are the perks? What are the perks that should outweigh those losses in the casino? I thought what better way to kind of tie that all together to come up with part 2B. And here I've taken an Excel spreadsheet that I've been working on for years now. I put some little flourishes on it and I'll give you access to it so you can take and you can run simulations of your own using the structures and the strategies that we've talked about before. You can even double click on the formulas, see how we came up with that. Make sure that I'm not completely full of it. I did get some comments saying I'm completely full of it and that's fine. Uh, but I'm trying to be transparent here. I'm trying to give you the tools showing you this is how I came up with it and to prove that I'm, I don't have any ulterior motive here. So let's get right into it. I'll talk about the spreadsheet. Uh, there'll be a link in the description below for you to download that spreadsheet. There'll also be some text showing the link to that spreadsheet, although it's pretty long, but let's jump right into it. All right, so this is what the spreadsheet looks like. You can download it from my Google Drive account. It is called Roulette Simulator. Imagine that. Here's the link for it. I don't suppose you want to type that in though, so uh, I would suggest going <laughs> to the description. The link is in the description. So let's talk about this spreadsheet. Uh, let's go through it column by column so you know how to manipulate it for yourself, have a little understanding of how it works. Uh, so we'll look at it piece by piece. I received some feedback that uh, some people on phones can't see this. Heck, you might not even be able to see this giant spreadsheet on your TV screen. Uh, so definitely would want to look at that on a computer. Uh, but I will kind of zoom in so we can see it even if you're watching it on a phone. So here's the first four columns of the spreadsheet. I made this spreadsheet fairly complicated so it was very flexible. And the first thing I added was this bounce column. So in the upper left, you see bounce. I think it says bounce or column. Yeah, that's what it says. So if you put a zero here, what it's going to do is it's going to pick a random dozen and then play that dozen until it hits. And then it's gonna randomly select another dozen. It might be the same dozen, could be a different one. It's just randomly picking the three different dozens. If you type a one here, it'll always pick the first dozen, a two, always the second dozen, and obviously a three, always the third dozen. It'll just pick a static dozen and play that out until you experience your big loss. Right to the right of that is spins. So say you wanted to only simulate a hundred spins instead of the 10,000 that this simulator can simulate, I would type 100 in this spins field. Next one over to the right is max bet. This is fairly self-explanatory. This simulator will stop at whatever values in this field. Uh, once it hits that, it'll set the bet amount to zero and it'll hit turn the win column, win or loss, to 999. And it'll throw a flag on the far right hand side of the spreadsheet saying, hey, this is where I actually stopped based off that max bet. Moving down from there, so this is the actual calculations themselves. Uh, the top area I would say is the settings. The bottom area is the uh, calculations. So the fourth row down, spin number, it's just sequentially counting how many spins it's been. Uh, this simulator goes all the way up to 10,000 spins. And then the spin result, so this is just a random number generator. It's 
generating a random number between 1 and 38. 37 and 38 would be like a zero and double zero. You could modify this spreadsheet to only generate up to 37 if you wanted it to simulate a European table. I didn't add that into the options up top, uh, but if you know anything about Excel, that would be pretty easy to do. Next column over is dozen played. So this is taking from that upper bounce or static dozen and it's saying, okay, what dozen are we playing? So it, the next column is gonna be one or lost. So it's gonna compare the spin result to what dozen we played. And it's gonna give us a one if we won the bet or a zero if we lost the bet. The next four columns of the spreadsheet. Uh, the second column in this section is the bet multiplier. Here a zero would be the conservative structure, a one would be the moderate structure, and a two would be the aggressive structure. Moving over to the right, maximum win. Here you can put in, okay, I want the simulation to stop when I hit a certain win amount. That's what you put in this field under max win. Moving down, so this would be the fifth column of the spreadsheet would be losses in a row so here if we lose it's going to put a one if we lose the next spin after it it's going to put a two it's just going to keep a cumulative count of how many losses we've had in a row this is helpful because we can look over at another part of the spreadsheet and we can verify okay the simulation played out as many losses in a row as i can absorb depending on what my risk level is and what structure I'm playing. Uh, and you can confirm. You can also take a look and see statistically how many times did I lose three times in a row? How many times did I lose 10 times in a row? Uh, it gives you a snapshot of that to see how deep you went. Um, and we can compare that to our expected tables in my second part of this series. I'm gonna call this section or <laughs> part 2B. Um, but anyhow, we can compare that statistically to say, yeah, does this simulation fall where it expected to statistically? Uh, so the next column, this would be the sixth column in the spreadsheet is bet. So here, depending on how you set your bet multiplier up above, it's going to run through the structure. Each time you hit, it's going to revert to the top of the structure. Uh, each time you lose, it's going to go down a rung of the structure like we talked about in the first part of this series. Uh, and then bet result. Uh, if we missed our spin, it's going to take our bet and set that as a negative amount. If we win, it's going to take our bet and pay us two to one in that column. Uh, next one over, this would be the eighth column, is cumulative loss. So here, if we lose, it's going to add it to the previous loss, if any. Uh, so it's going to say, okay, in this run, how much have I lost in this run? Each time we win, it's going to reset to zero. Each time we lose, it's going to add it to the previous losses, however long that string of losses is. And this next slide is going to be the final part of the settings and simulation. Uh, so here, this is columns number nine through 12 in the spreadsheet. Uh, so the first, actually we don't have any settings left. These are actually results. Uh, so the first result you're going to see, this would be in the second column of this slide, which would be column 10 of the spreadsheet, would be the end spin. So here it's gonna look at the simulation and say, Okay, either where did we hit our max bet first, where did we hit our maximum number of spins first, uh, or where did the final big loss happen. And then end bank is the same. It's going to just look at that same row. It's going to look over and say, okay, how much money did I have at the end of that simulation? It's normally going to be a negative number, indicating your big loss. Uh, but there are some simulations where you just never ever hit that final big loss or your winnings are bigger than that big loss was. 
Uh, so you'll end up with a positive number instead of the negative number. A negative number means that we lost money. A positive number means that we made money um, on that simulation. All right, so moving down. So here we're going to look at column nine in the simulation portion of the spreadsheet. Uh, the first column is bankroll. So here we're going to take and we're going to take the result and just roll it into a cumulative number. Uh, so as we win, this number increases. As we lose, it decreases. Next column, column 10, it's going to be end spin. So this is just a flag that's going to throw as soon as you hit your final, whether that be max number of spins, maximum bet, uh, whatever flag ends the simulation, it's going to throw a number in this column, a number besides zero. And then uh, end bank is the same thing. As soon as it throws that flag, it's going to move a value into the column corresponding to the next or the last spin we had. Uh, it's going to say, okay, what was my bank at that last spin? Um, so those are kind of lookups. Those aren't really part of the simulation. Those are more results. I did add two last minute things that I thought would be valuable and would correlate back to part one of this series. I added another column to the right of end bank, the flag um, in the last column. I added total dollar value. So that's just a sum of all of the bets that were placed before that flag is thrown. And then the column to the right of that is average dollars per spin. So then I just took the total dollar value divided it by how many spins so like we talked about in the first part of the series uh, these are two important numbers to us it's how much money we've run through should correlate to how many points you earned from the casino and the average dollars per spin should be what the uh, pit boss has you down for a rating if the pit boss is paying attention then to the right of that in the spreadsheet is this last little section. This again is results from the simulation. Uh, but here's how many times did we miss a spin at any given point. Uh, so here you can see we missed the first spin in the series 556 times. Uh, whereas we only missed six spins in a row 86 times. Uh, I truncated this a little bit. It does go all the way down to 20 spins. Um, so based off of which structure you use, unless you stop the simulation early for max one or max number of spins, uh, say you picked the moderate structure and played it out to table max, uh, it should have gone to 17 spins. And you should see one occurrence in the 17. It's just a way to make sure that the simulation ran properly. Um, it really has no bearing on the other calculations that were made. It's just a result that you can verify that the simulation ran properly. You could also use this to say, hey, you know, how this simulation compare to the statistical odds that are in the math tables in part two of this series. I wouldn't base it off of a single simulation. What I would do is probably run the simulation 10 times uh, paste the results into a separate set of columns and then take the average of those and uh, your average should come very very close to the calculated odds uh, from part two of this series all right hopefully that made some sense uh, so we talked about the spreadsheet piece by piece by piece if you ever, ever have any questions about it just put them down in the comments below and I will make every effort to answer those. It should be fairly self-explanatory. If you have some Excel skills, you can even go in there and look at the formulas and see for yourself how all of this works. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, slap a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, you'll be privy to part three, where which is really the meat of it all. What kind of perks can I expect to get from the specifically Royal Caribbean Casino uh, that should offset some of the losses uh, that all of this math has shown that we should be experiencing as we play roulette using this strategy or any strategy for that matter. You might be lucky short term, but long term statistics is going to win. So hopefully you enjoyed. We'll see you for next video.